Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we are opening up our wave two of Etherfields. Yeah, one of the most beautiful and uh, just incredibly themed and scripted concepts. I just, man, this is a really cool looking campaign. So yeah, we're a little behind the curve on this. I know I have the core box downstairs. I have played through it back mm -hmm. when it first arrived. Yeah, uh, we had a good time, time with it. But due to the pandemic and due to the world shifting and due to moving, it kind of got set off to the side for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And now we have an actual board game table, which is going to allow us to start exploring campaign games I'm so excited. all over again. Now, we think that we're starting with ISS Vanguard due yes. to a popular vote between it and Frosthaven. Right, ISS beat out Frosthaven? What's that? So our community has voted on that, but Etherfields is going to be entering the ranks. And so in order to start prepping in that direction, mm -hmm. we want to be able to open it up, showcase a little bit, remind you that we have it, and then start talking about after the next two months are over, mm -hmm. what other campaign games we're going to start exploring. It's true. What is the core premise of Etherfields, West Todd? So the core premise of Etherfields is that you basically wake up and you're in a dream situation. You're not really sure if it's your dream, someone else's dream, a dream world, but you're basically in dreams. And so the first couple of rounds, you're just trying to figure out what you're doing, where you are, and how you're exploring and going through those things. You're grabbing keys to unlock different scenarios so that you can move on to different dreams. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, like you said, it's not only a, I mean, as Awakened Realms does, aesthetically beautiful game, mm -hmm. but also I've always been really compelled by the theme and the thematics of it. Yeah. I like the idea of diving into this Alice in Wonderland with like a dark, twisted fantasy side to it. Yeah. I like the idea of exploring dreams. Now, they do have a 2.0 pack that came yes, with this. an update. And it isn't actually what you'd Im immediately think of in a 2.0 update. It's not yeah. full of rules corrections. No. It's, Instead... It's, it's uh, streamlining in certain circumstances, especially the map tiles. I know one of the... the quirks and things that people were a little frustrated about. And the first one is the grindy aspect of, of the game. And sometimes the map tiles were a little confusing and they might be a little overwhelming. Um, because at its heart, it's a puzzle game. Yeah. And so there were certain situations, there, there was two main elements, as far as I remember, mm -hmm. that were maybe a little bit bogged down. And this is helping rectify those. First right. off, if you failed one of the puzzles, mm -hmm. you had to go get keys to reopen it back up, yes. to go through one of the dreams again. So if you failed something, it wasn't as simple as retrying, right? right. It was as complicated as spend more time to go get a chance to potentially retry the level again. And hope you don't fail. It's like beating a bunch of minions before the boss. And when you can beat the minions fine, it's the boss you're having yeah. trouble with. And they've solved that with the uh, the advent of this power nap. So yeah. now you can place this card over top of that dream, so you don't have to unlock it again with a whole bunch of keys and grinding. You just have the ability to do that. Now keep in mind you only have one power nap card, so if you fail two different dreams, ugh, you're gonna have to choose one, unfortunately. <laughs> but that's okay because it gives you a little bit more control, and right. it's actually a house rule that a lot of people were, were kind of like a lot of people were like, uh, I'm gonna try that yeah, puzzle again. Let's, I'm, let's I'm gonna that one. cycle again. The other thing that was maybe a little bit bogged down was some of the movement, some of the mm -hmm. board control that the game had, where like you'd right. go into a certain area and you were forced to take or resolve a certain step mm -hmm. or have a certain item in order to move there. They've also cleaned that up a little bit with uh, uh, some of these. It's the first map tile we're allowed to, sh this one here. Yes. So yeah, with this some of these one, map tiles. Uh, one of the things that was frustrating was there was a red exclamation point. I can't remember the name of what it was called, but then there were also keys. And grinding keys, you had to go to specific locations to get those keys. In here, you can actually get keys from the shopping locations yeah. and from the gate cards. So it's a It's now a bit of an option. action that you can do. Yep. So needless to say, if some of you were concerned about okay. Etherfields from the beginning because you thought maybe it looked a little bit too much uh, yeah. like on the... Uh, player EP or like puzzle side of the game nature. Mm -hmm. They've actually created and developed some systems that give you a way to experience it more as a narrative mm -hmm. and less as a hardcore puzzle, which for me is how I've always wanted to experience yeah. this game. Uh, so there's also the save feature too, which is a little different now. But it's also it's also really cool because they have this whole breakdown. Mm -hmm. We've gathered a lot of information. Here's the general breakdown of the stuff that we've heard the community talk about. Yep. None of them are hardcore corrections but all of them are adjustments. Correct. They have a new save system, which is yeah. nice, and they have a 2.0 rulebook, which just goes through and adds clarifications. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually change any of the rules. Correct. Uh, but it is recommended to replace this. 
Yeah, and in here, if you've never played the game before um, and you're just going through setup for the very first time, you can just follow all the green text and that mm -hmm. will get you where you need to go. You don't have to go too crazy and reading a lot of different things. All life is only a set of pictures in the brain, among which there is no difference between those born of real things and those born of inward dreamings, and no cause to value the one above the other. H.P. Lovecraft. I honestly think that this is probably one of the most beautiful artwork-wise games I've seen in a really, really long time. Okay, so we have a Creatures of Etherfield box and we have mm -hmm. a fifth player expansion. These, yep. I believe, came in the original core, uh, like the first wave. At least okay. I have a second copy downstairs. <laughs> the fifth player is going to be the thing that's adding in an opportunity to play an alternative character. I do think the game is best around two players. Oh, yes, uh, for sure. <laughs> and so fifth player is just giving you a alternate uh, to mix in Five players for any campaign game is quite a bit to bite off. Yeah. Uh, Creatures of Etherfield is going to be a bunch of beautiful miniatures, which we're going to get into these. For sure. But I would like to go ahead and start breaking open the stuff I haven't actually seen before. Sounds we have good. Etherfield Stretch Goals, Harpy and the She-Wolf campaigns. Mm -hmm. We have the Funeral Witch campaign. And then the Sphinx campaign, which I believe most people were really excited about. Yeah? All right. Yeah. I'll, slice, I'll slice this one slightly and then hand you the... The piece. So okay. let's see here. Now I don't actually know how these campaigns mix into the core game. I do know that you have to complete the core box first before you can do any of the expansions. Okay. That is how a lot of Awakened Realms titles tend to be. Yeah. Uh, so let's see here. Etherfield Stretch Goals includes two additional campaigns full of eerie dreams and secrets, flying cats and Riddler expansions, and several optional game modes. The Harpy campaign focuses on the dreamer's journey through the dream world in pursuit of a thief who, thief who robbed their house and crushed their comforting fantasy. You will visit vivid places as the, at the infinite market or the prison, and will join many parades, parties, and carnivals. Each dream can be approached in several different ways, resulting in different outcomes. Each of your choices will have a powerful impact on the story, so choose wisely. And one of the other things I find really interesting in this campaign is that unlike a lot of things, the choices you don't make actually affect you throughout the game because you chose not to see this person or you chose not to do this situation. And because you made the choice not to do something, that thing will come back and get you mm. again in the end, which I think is very cool. So some of the artwork that I oh, love, they have a mask gorgeous. system in this game, which is like your personality, the, the, the visage you're putting on when you're journeying through these. Uh, and so those are there. Just Let's see here. Uh, we have the secret scripts. Once I tried to escape from the forest, but as I went farther from the castle, the shade grew denser and the air, the air more filled with brooding fear, so that I ran frantically back, lest I lose my way in a labyrinth of nighted silence. Another H.P. Lovecraft quote. So this is going to be all of the cool story elements, uh, which we're not going to read through, of course, but that's going to be the campaign elements. And now let's take a look at the models. So... We have a, uh, this is the Harpy. It's the Harpy, yeah. Awakened Realms always does an absolutely models. brilliant job when it comes to oh, the miniatures. Yeah. So, just, uh, I mean, the wolf, that's the wolf is one of my favorites. We have a, uh, what is this? That's a, the, a flying cat. That's their, that's their cat the miniature. Shimmer, I think. And then we have, it looks like another player character that's putting on a mask or something mm -hmm. like that. Someone that's, that's putting on a visage. Now, we're not actually going to... Fox. pop all these cards and look yeah. through them all because every single one of these is the actual story, right? And so opening up things, disorganizing stuff is a, good, a good way plan. to uh, it's a good way to not have anything organized anymore and also a good way to spoil stuff for the audience. So let's open up these other boxes, yep. take a look at them and then talk about if we were going to play what we would probably do if we were going to play is we'd get through the core campaign ourselves. Right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick these, by the way, into this box here. Okay. So we have them organized here. So what you're saying is, Wes, remember that we put those very important cards that update all the map tiles in the entire game yep. into that one box. Into Got this it. box right okay. here. Okay. Yeah, this, this one's glad we're together on that. So if we were going to play through this, if this was one of the things, we'd probably spend, because uh, our plan is to play games on camera but not, not necessarily play the full campaign itself always on camera. Right. So what we would likely do with Etherfields is off camera while we film ISS, ISS Vanguard, we'd play Etherfields off camera through the core box. Mm -hmm. Then we'd come up and we'd decide to do a few scenarios journeying through like the Funeral Witch or the Harpy and the She-Wolf. So what are you the most interested in? And, and I would like to hear from the audience as well, what would you actually like to see us play? The Sphinx <clears throat> has so many map tiles. Yeah? So many map tiles. I love these. These masks are oh. one of the things that just 
They're just drew me into this. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the game is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. What is the, uh, is there flavor text or story? I am sure that there is here. Let's see. Uh, there's a Poe quote here. By the aid of these, we then busied our souls in dreams, reading, writing, or conversing, until warmed by the clock of the advent of the true darkness. Then we sallied forth into the streets, Edgar Allan Poe. The funeral witch campaign will lead you on a journey through the dream world shrouded in thick mists that influence the emotions of all denizens. You'll quickly discover the source of those changes. Funeral witch, a mysterious entity, entity dwelling in the abandoned tenement accompanied by strange entourage. She is troubled by an event from the past that she cannot remember, although the pains are strognomonious. Hmm. Right. remain, making her a great danger to the dream world and its inhabitants. So this is, the funeral witch is tortured by her own dreams, but she doesn't remember her own dreams. Oh, what is this? Cool. I mean, I'm going to flash wow. through these because I don't know enough to know what I am and not, I'm not I'm spoiling. sure we're spoiling something. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. These are way cool. Uh, the artwork way is cool. so beautiful. And there's the funeral witch herself. Oh, wow. That's a huge, huge. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. It's really cool. It's a lot heavier, stronger plastic, too. That's really pretty. Nice. That is a nice mini. Nice, nice, nice. See, this makes me want, like, this has me back and excited to mm -hmm. dive into this. I remember when it first came in, Jan and I, like, flipped our lid. Uh, I, could, I could accomplish nothing more. For your sake, it would be sweet to live, but we must die together. I was never really insane, except on occasions where my heart was touched. Edgar Allan Poe. Like, it's also pulling, it's pulling from all these authors and all these, like, weird, twisted fantasy worlds. Of the macabre. Yeah. Are you more interested in this than Tainted Grail? Yes. Because Tainted Grail was not your theme. No, it wasn't. This is way more my theme. Oh, those are minis. Lots of I minis. love it. You can go pull them out. Are you sure? Yeah. This they is a, look so cool. This one, I believe people have seen most of these. And Sundrop. Yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get Sundrop copies of, uh... Look at everything. that. Or I'm going to have to sundrop my own. It's like the crow or the doctor. I don't know. I've not played it before. Stop screaming at me in the comments. This is really super cool with that crazy looking crow figure. Here's the Reaper expansion. So the other neat thing, if you see, you have two different types of characters. You have mm -hmm. yourself as like a normal person. And then you have yourself transformed into uh, like a deity or a goddess. Nice. That's representing this other type of person. So like every character has two different visages and player boards. That's really cool. So these are also sun dropped. See, I have a few sun dropped things. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta get I gotta get this stuff all either sun drop myself, I could paint it myself, I could go hunting on the market. I don't know. Yeah, playing with gray figurines is gonna be less good. I'll I'll paint them if anything. I'll paint them. With I all like, that extra time. I like painting. The amount of extra time I have <laughs> yes. for the paintings. Look at this crazy thing. Like, what is that? How, what, what is this? Yeah. See, I just want to. It's cool. I want, I want to exist in a world where all I have to do as well is come up with weird twisted stories like this that people buy into because it's freaking epic. I mean, that's like some crazy Gollum looking, but that's also like KDM. I mean, look, you can't tell me that doesn't have I mean, a KDM vibe. This to it. this makes me want Awaken Realms to partner with Brandon Sanderson so bad. Mm -hmm. Like, could you imagine the oh mega minis from gosh. that? Not not only the mega minis, but just the the amount of good combined storytelling mm. we would get between the two worlds. Yep. Ah, oh, it'd be glorious. It it'd be, be glorious. Okay. We have the shrink wrap off. We started taking a look. Let us know what what one of these dreams would you like to see us go through? Personally, I'm leaning towards either the Funeral Witch uh, or the she, -wolf, the she Wolf campaign. I didn't read the She Wolf one to you. She Wolf tells a story of a war between parasites, chaotic beings from the urbanized nightmare rift, and the endless forest, a place belonging to nature alone. Two opposite forces don't seem like they would be able to get along. And then Isn't that cool? Doesn't that sound cool. cool? It's cool. The Sphinx one says the Sphinx, the ruler of the underworld, contacted the dreamers, explaining that she needs their help. She's trapped in the dark realm buried under the dream world. She cannot remember the moment of her imprisonment. She doesn't know how to break her chains. Something that looks like an easy task will quickly turn into a confusing yet satisfying quest. So you're literally yeah, getting the her most out of lame the dream one, world. literally out of all of them. Mm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually I'm the least compelled by that one. This one, because of those cool things inside of it, I want to see what those are. Like, okay. Why does 
Does that, wh why do those giant pieces happen in there? I think that's really cool. So let us know. Are you excited about Etherfields? Are you excited that Wave 2 uh, has arrived? I think most people should have it by now. everyone has it by uh, now, yeah. Are you hoping and looking for more content down the road? I mean, Awakened Realms, like with, with uh, Tainted Grail just recently, mm -hmm. they just reissued a refined, more streamlined, and in yep. my opinion, better version of a game that I already loved. Mm -hmm. And I personally would love to see that here with Etherfields, too. Like, people that have journeyed through the campaign, people that are through Season 2 already, are you looking for the next standalone in this in this universe? Mm -hmm. I have no inside information, by the way. Yeah, I'm just right. speculating based off of what Awakened Realms has been doing, which is literally everything in the board game space. For sure, yeah. Like, Making beautiful, amazing things. Yeah. All right, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Do not unbox your games till you're ready to play them. It's really, really important because it keeps everything together. Mm, I, touch your stuff. Put it in your mouth. You'll like it better. Bye.